So, funny thing, turns out if you have a YouTube personal development channel, I was reading the YouTube fine print for this, at some point once a month you have to quote Tim Ferriss. So here's mine, baby. Ooh. Tim Ferriss, for those of you who don't know, productivity expert, has a podcast, kind of looks like me if I take my hat off, weird. Five Bullet Friday. Anyway, he has this question on his podcast, The Tim Ferriss Show, that he asks to all of his guests. He says, what is one purchase under $100 that has changed your life? or made a positive impact in some way. What I like about the question is it's talking about affordable incremental changes. It's not like, hey, buy a house, bucko. It's way more practical than that. It's like, hey man, have you thought about getting a second phone charger at work? That small tweak is gonna make your life pretty easy. But listening to that question so many times, it kind of got me thinking, how would I answer it? What is something under a hundred bucks that has changed my life? In fact, if I'm gonna make a video, I can do more than just one, can't I? I can do 10. Item one, a tile for my keys. Do you ever thought you'd be watching a YouTuber just talk about his keys? So here are my keys. Uh, you can see my blockbuster video keychain. And you can also see this big white thing. This is something that I can just call on my phone at any time. It's a... Uh called Nut, which is kind of a funny name. <laughs> Always makes me giggle because I'm a 12 year old boy deep down. But yeah, basically I used to lose my keys all the time. Now I don't. Success story, cha-ching, by the nut. <laughs> Oh, by the way, none of these are sponsored. I should mention that. This is just me talking about stuff that I like. Thanks, Nut. Item two, a 0.7 millimeter felt tip pen. I'm gonna grab this because I've got heaps. It's my pencil case. Grown ups have pencil cases. It says Seabiscuit, the eye fell out. Kill Bill moment. And this is the pen in question, a 0.7 millimeter felt tip pen. What 0.7 millimeters refers to is the diameter of the actual felt tip. The larger it is, the thicker your lines. Now this item took my life in a whole different direction. When I was 25, I was curious about drawing and tattoo as well, but I wasn't very good at it. And this is usually how these things start. You're not very good, but you're quite interested. Now I wanted to improve, but I didn't really know how. So I was like, I guess I'll just ask somebody how to improve. So I walked into a tattoo parlor because I knew that working there was this artist that I admired, a guy called Rick for Four Eyes Tattoo. He's actually done quite a lot of my body, including the dog's rule on my stomach. And I was like, hey man, I like your art. How can I get better at art myself? He's like, well, let me see your drawings. So I showed him and he did the face, you know, the face when someone's trying to like not tell you that you suck. He's like, oh, cool man, love your passion. <laughs> And I was like, I can read between the lines here, man. Like, what am I doing wrong? And he's like, honestly, a few things. But firstly, I just think you're using the wrong pen. I was like, what? And he's like, you're using a ballpoint and occasionally like a 0.4 fine liner. He's like, why don't you use a slightly thicker pen? Because it'll round out some of the shakes in your hand, natural shakes. And you'll start to get a sense of what a smooth line feels like. And when you see smooth lines coming out of your hand, that competence is going to probably help you quite a lot. And he was right. I started using thicker lines and this started masking a lot of those early mistakes that I was making. And what this gave me was, as he predicted, that feeling of competence, which is just so underrated and so motivating. When you can actually do something, you are so much more inspired to keep getting better at it. But yeah, one thing led to another and I became a professional illustrator. Thanks, Rick. Item three, the Tooth Fairy on Blu-ray. Okay, that's a joke. It's actually the pacifier. I am the pacifier. No, in all serious, item three is this. <laughs> Wasn't that graceful? A lockbox. This thing is so underrated. I don't know why this isn't just a staple in people's houses in 2022. So you can probably guess how this works. You grab your phone or whatever else it is that you're addicted to. I know some people I work with put their vapes in these. Um, then you put this thing on, you set your timer, you press this down, and then you can't touch your phone for an hour, two hours, whatever it is. Yep, little phone jail. That's the item. Now, I am pretty damn screen addicted, but like many of you, I have goals and dreams and stuff like that. One of which is writing a second book. And the only way, literally the only way that I know that I can reliably write that book is when I've trapped my phone in here and I can't do anything. Oh, and also a really cool feature of this one is even if you take the batteries out because you're trying to like cheat the clock and get your phone out, there's still a little battery inside, which means when you put the batteries back in, the timer is still going. You can't free your phone and it's just liberating. It's real nice. Item four, 
Snorkeling gear. Yeah, I've pretty much had a lifelong fear of marine life. Squid, sharks, fish, even whales. And on one hand, I have a desire to overcome that fear, but on the other hand, Squids are freaky, dude. But then, yeah, my brother-in-law goes ahead and buys me this snorkeling gear. He was really into it, and he's like, come on, man, just give it a shot, dude. I was a bit quiet about my fear that day, but, you know, we went under, and it was just a whole new world. Something about being underwater and seeing so much marine life was really, really cool. I even saw sharks that day. I was like, wow. It was stunning. But through this item, something which was a huge fear has now become a hobby that I absolutely love. And I've since seen the full cast of Finding Nemo. It's awesome. Fish are friends. Oh, and the best part is because I've faced that fear and I know I can, it's made me start to face other phobias. So a big one is arachnophobia, which isn't convenient if you live in Australia. But yeah, just from one item, I managed to get all these cool experiences, plus that domino effect of conquering fears. Amazing. Item five, it's a quick one. Nag frickin' champa, bruh. I know I've talked about incense on this channel before and I know I'll talk about it again, but damn, we gotta treat our noses. It's a beautiful ritual when you light a bit of incense. There's something in you that says, yeah, this space is nice and I'm gonna have a nice time. There's like a slowing down, a pause. And and for me, incense represents pretty much the opposite of the rush of life. And it's nice to be reminded of it. Item six, a Polaroid camera. Now I know that I'm about to sound like a blogger from 2012, but hear me out. Because if we can just detach the hipster stigma from the Polaroid camera, then we can appreciate how much of an amazing item it actually is. So just like the lockbox, this sort of comes back to, I guess, my disdain for phones. It's pretty easy to get desensitized to photos and any given day I could take, honestly, dozens, dozens of photos on my phone roll. And if you do scroll through your phone roll, you'll see like moments where you're like, oh, there's 30 photos of the same thing. Oh, there's 40 photos of me. None of them look quite good. And just the sheer volume of them, it kind of reduces their value, if you know what I mean. But this is pretty much the opposite of all of that. Firstly, it prints a physical copy of the photo. That's awesome. You get like a souvenir, that's really cool. Secondly, you have to pay for the film and you only get a certain amount of photos that you can take. That scarcity for me is really exciting because it just puts more value on every single photo you take. And these photos are obviously not stored digitally. So, you know, you kind of got to put them somewhere and then they become like this cool little like monument to friendship or whatever. And because of all of these things, you tend to only use this on special occasions. So all of the photos you do take are really, really nice. And there are people that you just generally love. But mostly what I love about these photos is that they they don't belong to the internet. And that is just so pure in an age where so much stuff does, especially as somebody who puts a lot of stuff on the internet. It's nice to have just that little act of rebellion. Plus they instantly feel nostalgic and I don't know, can't really put a price on that. So yeah, 10 year old hipster meme aside, this is actually a really brilliant piece of technology and I love it. Item seven, the Calm app. So the Calm app is a meditation app and I think it cost me like 60 bucks a year. So I guess technically after two years, it's not an item under a hundred bucks. So we'll disqualify it next year. But yeah, in 2018, the Calm app was recommended to me by a therapist. She was encouraging me to try mindfulness and meditation, which for me just kind of felt like a catchphrase that I just kept hearing and I was kind of a bit resistant to it. I was like, got it, mindfulness, meditation, mindfulness, meditation, mindfulness, meditation. And she's like, no, 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 just download the app and just do what they say. And I was like, Okay, so I did, but yeah, it was cool. I just started doing one before I went to bed every night and it started slowing down my brain. So thank you, Calm, for making me calm. Slightly. Also, thank you, Lexapro. Item eight, a decent yoga mat. Hmm, the guy who said incense in a meditation app is now saying yoga mat. Uh-oh. Buddy, are you in your early 30s? You bet I am. So yeah, right now, I guess I'm your friend who's like, dude, you have to try yoga. Cat cow will change your life. You need to do it, bro. Do it. But it actually does. Oh, golly. I can hear it too. But let's cut to the chase. Yoga does feel amazing. Stretching feels good. You get toned, you get flexible, you breathe, you hang out with your buddy Adrian. If you know, you know. I like having a constant reminder that I am only ever a few moves away from relaxing and escaping the crazy pace of the world. Or put more simply, seeing my yoga mat 50 times a day and it's saying to me, hey bro, take it easy. It's so much nicer than seeing social media 50 times a day and having it say, your life isn't good enough. You should feel guilty when you don't post. Chase the algorithm, be jealous of people. You know? Item nine, chameleon. Hmm, what's a board game doing on a change my life list? Surely a board game is just something that could change your night. Wrong again. This is cool, it's like prop comedy, isn't it? So this is chameleon and it's a very, very easy game to learn. You can teach anybody and they can instantly become quite good at it. It's a game of subterfuge, table talk, categories and lying. It's really cool. It's um, won a few awards, I think as well. 
Huh. Maybe not. Oh, yeah, there we go. 2017, best party game. Nice, it's made by Big Potato Games and it's phenomenal. So here's the change my life part. So I don't do drugs anymore at all and I don't really drink unless it's a special occasion. But when I was trying to quit all that, what I realized is that alcohol is a terrific social lubricant. If you are going over to say some cousin's house that you haven't seen in 10 years and you're meant to make conversation, having a little glass of wine is a really easy way to do that. When you take away that glass of wine, you are stuck with Hey man, how's the weather, sport, job, family? I don't know, haircut. So now I've got this quest, right? I want that social lubricant back, but I don't want to drink. Enter chameleon. Having a structure to have good banter in when you're sober, when you're with people that you don't really know that well, amazing, amazing. And look, I know it's nerdy to bring a board game around instead of a bottle of wine, but suspend your judgment because it's a great game. <laughs> and item 10, these dog tattoos on my arm. So this one was slightly more than a hundred bucks, but the whole change my life thing definitely happened with these dogs. So these dogs are from the book Go Dog Go by P.D. Eastman. It was my favorite book as a kid. And I got it at a parlor called the Hub Collective in Newcastle. Now, the reason that I was at that parlor is because I had a couple of hours to kill before this job interview. Incidentally, I went to the job interview and I started bleeding through my white shirt mid-interview. There was just like blood all over my elbow. Uh, I actually got the job. But even though I had that job, I was like, well... I really like the vibe of this parlor. Anyway, as I was getting this dog tattoo, I start talking to the couple who run the place and one thing led to another and we sort of became friends and I started visiting that shop a little bit more often and eventually I became their apprentice and I started learning tattoo for myself. So that was awesome. So in many ways, this dog tattoo for me represents the stage of my life where I started properly making money off my art. So that is the list. what do you think? Did you enjoy it? I did. Also, if you've got time, I'd love to like do something with the comments here. If you could help other people out by putting in your items under hundred bucks that changed your life. Cause I'm sure we got some pretty cool variation and I'm sure there's like heaps of stuff that we all haven't thought of. So yeah, give me yours. I'm curious. And how's this for a segue? If you would also like one more item under hundred bucks that might change your life. <laughs> you can buy my book, Your Head is a Houseboat. Um, according to Osha, it actually is life-changing. He said the most important and accessible mental health book in a generation, truly life-changing. So I guess this fits the bill. Okay, that's enough for the plug, but um, yeah, genuinely, I put a lot into that book. So if you like what you see here, this is, uh, this is a bit more of it, man. Anyway, have an amazing day. Thank you so much. Subscribe if you're new and I don't know, keep being glorious. Catch ya.